All right. Let's see, that should work good. Yeah. All right. And there we go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get my coffee ready, guys. Hope everyone's hope everyone's doing all right. Just gonna get my coffee here and we'll we'll get right to it. Joker, how you doing, buddy? All right, just gonna get my coffee. Second cup, so I should be pretty good. There we go. All right. Okay. So, hope everyone's doing well. I, I guess I guess this makes it about 14, 15 days for me. Um, I don't know for you guys, but for myself, I certainly knew... You know, when South by Southwest got canceled, I, uh, I knew there was an issue, and then a couple of the other festivals got canceled, Coachella, all that stuff, but I knew that there was going to be a lockdown when they canceled uh, Armani. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I knew that they were going to shut down stuff when basketball canceled. <laughs> you know why? Because America loves its sports so much. And sports are such a major part of American life that there is, there is, if you, if they're willing to shut that down at the cost of the bookies and the, the American underground mafioso industry without recourse, if they're, if they're willing to shut that down, excuse me guys, if they're willing to shut that down, then, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. How many sectors are affected? Sorry, guys, I got a little gunk on my glasses here. If you're willing to shut down sports, then you're willing to go all the way. And that's when I knew things were going to be bad. Uh, Brad, how you doing, buddy? What's up, Johnny? Missed on having self loss. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was going to be a bad idea, buddy. I swear. So, so that was when I started to take heed of something was going down. And then it was uh, the Joe Rogan episode with Nicholas Christakis, which was two weeks ago, which that certainly cleared up everything for me that there was a major problem. And I remember Chris, um, Nicholas was saying what was going to happen. And I was like thinking to myself, that is surreal. That can't be Right, that can't be what was going on. Uh, and, and, if, and if that is what's going on, woo, we're going to be in trouble. So I've been uh, locked up since then. Uh, that's basically a little over two weeks. But to be honest with you, um, AJ and I were so busy with work during that period. I mean, I was basically living a monk lifestyle anyway. Uh, we were trying to crank out some uh, a transition to move fully more so into virtual with our programs because we were wrapping them up at the end of the summer. And uh, for those of you who are still want a piece of that, you can hit us up. Uh, as soon as we're back up and running, we're going to be finishing those out. But that's um, so I, you know, to, to, to be honest. Um, I was already working from home most of my time, which brings us to our topic today. Um, I'll be giving you guys some tips at home, but first I just wanted to chat with you all about some, some two interesting stories here in Hollywood that I had to contend with that, you, you know, during this period, it's, it's, it is definitely... Hollywood. It was two Hollywood stories that that I thought you all would appreciate. And it put me in a position because I didn't know what to do about it. You know, with everything that's going on, I I don't want to get involved with other people. I'm told to stay home. Um, but I also have, I'm also a human being. I also have a, a inclination and, and a desire to want to help people. Um, and, 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 to do our part, they want us to, to hold back. Not that I am 
signal, signaling what a moral do-gooder I am. I'm a flawed human being like everybody else. Um, so, but I, I, I will give you these, these two stories. Also, my glasses are a little funky today. Um, probably because I just cleaned them. So, I don't normally wear glasses either. Uh, Lisa's on the other, on one of our Art of Charm groups there, and she knows that. Um, but it's funny, it's like, what am I gonna, why am I gonna go through contact lenses if I'm not out being social? It's a, it's a, there, it's a waste. Um, so, however, you know, I kind of, when it came to the glasses, I kind of dig what I, I picked out. I picked them out because I thought they were sturdy and they, they made me look a little bit studious, as studious as I could possibly look with my rock and roll cut and do, but, um, I don't know, I, I like them. What do you guys think? They're all right. Do I look studious or do I look, uh, completely insane? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, two Hollywood stories. So, two things that happened while I've been on lockdown. Uh, was the, it all looks good on you. Well, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. I can always expect, I can always count on you for a wonderful compliment. Insanely studious. Well, thank you. I, I, will, I will take that. So, if you guys follow me on Twitter... And um, that is, I have the Art of Charm Twitter, which is the one I use, which probably most of you guys in, the, in Periscope know me from. I also have a private account, which is AOC Johnny, which I'm, I'm able to be a little bit more frank, uh, a little bit more candid there because I don't have to speak through the mouth of AOC. And there's some things that, that I just don't feel are appropriate from that account. So you can follow me, AOC Johnny. I appreciate that. And anyway, if you had followed me over there, you had you would have seen I posted a picture of a few a uh, few days ago. This was last week. I think this was Friday. So I live in a little studio apartment on Hollywood Boulevard. It's uh, it's it's I guess spacious for a little Hollywood apartment. But as you can see, this is my now this is my kitchen, that's the door out, and then I have a nice, I have a little living room bed area. Anyway, I'm, I, I'm very um, minimalistic like that. Um, it, it's just the way I am. I have always been that way. Anyway, so I, and I have a little makeshift desk that I have put by the window so I can look out into the common area of, of my building in that common area. It has a pool, it has a hot tub, and it has a seating area. Anyway, as our building is on lockdown as well, we're not allowed in any of those parts. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm working away and I, I hear the gate crash. Hold on guys, an ambulance or whistles. All right, sorry about that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm at my desk, I'm working, and I hear the gate crash, and I, I look outside and I see this random guy with a backpack bopping around the, the courtyard. Now, people have been walking through it, but you're not allowed to hang out, conjugate. Um, you're not allowed to be out there. Anyway, he goes over to the pool and he sticks his hand in it, and test the water and gives a little nod. And then he walks over to the hot tub and strips down and he has swim trunks underneath his pants. So this was obviously planned. And so he takes off his pants, he's in his swim trunks, he sets his backpack down and he goes for a swim. And I'm thinking, what the hell's this guy doing? And he gets out of the pool and walks over to the hot tub and he sits down in it and he opens up his backpack. He pulls out several things of sushi, a bottle of wine, <laughs> and, 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 he's just, and, and, and some soap and detergent and starts washing up in the hot tub. Now, this was a clean shaven person. 
He planned to come. He had swim trunks on. The sushi was bought directly from the store, as was the bottle of wine. And he starts washing up in the hot tub. So I'm watching this, and I'm mind blown, because we have a... Oh, I should, you know what? I should have put my light on so I look a little better, too. Um, and I'm watching this, and I'm just amazed at this guy. And I'm waiting for security to roll up and interrogate what this guy's doing. And I'm, I go back to work, and eventually I hear some commotion outside, and I realize that's, that's them. So security, and they're, they're asking him, sir, do you live here? Oh, yeah, I live here. And they're like, what building? And he just starts pointing to all the buildings. And, they're, and he's like, well, I work here. I work for some people. And he doesn't really give a real answer. And, th and they ask him, they're like, sir, this area is off limits due to the virus. What are you doing? And he answers them, hanging poolside, having some sushi. <laughs> And I'm, I was amazed. And they're like, you can't do that here. This area is, is prohibited and everyone must stay in the building. Sir, what building do you work in? Well, I work for some people over here and some people over there. I'm like, sir, no, they're like, how did you get in? And he's like, I, I walked in. I got on the elevator. So through that, it was obvious that he has been here before. He felt comfortable enough to walk into the pool area. He had swim trunks underneath his jeans. So it was amazing to me. So that's Hollywood story number one. Oh, and if you want to see the picture of this, if you go over to my private Twitter account, AOC Johnny, you will see the picture of him in the hot tub with the sushi and the wine. It's ridiculous. And so... Yesterday, it was, it was sunny out for the first day in a long time. And what's extremely odd about what is going on is it had been raining for much of the time we've been stuck in our, um, on our lockdown. And so with that, uh, it, it's been cloudy and, and it's also been cold, like low 60s. And so I haven't felt compelled to, to leave. And, but yesterday the sun came out and I really wanted to get outside. I really wanted to be in the sun. I really wanted to feel the sun on my face. So I walked out to the to the area where the elevators are and there's a balcony there and I looked out into the street just to make sure it was it, it was okay what was going on out there and I had seen some other people with some groceries a couple people uh going to the Shake Shack that is in the retail space in my building um, and it looked okay looked pretty normal and then I looked down the street and there was a guy in just jeans just jeans, no t-shirt, no shirt, jeans, and that's it. He's just wearing jeans, no tennis shoes, no socks, just jeans. And he was a clean shaven Asian guy, which was odd. Uh, if he's going to be homeless, he's going to be dirty. And he's, um, well, stereotypical in general, what, what the homeless folk of Los Angeles look like are the usual tattered rags and beard and facial and, and all that stuff. And I'm watching him and he, he is moving as if he had drank a few bottles of Maker's Mark. I mean, his guy is lit up and he's staggering on the sidewalk, bouncing off the buildings. Now, I saw him approach some people, but he didn't say anything. He just kind of slurred into them. And so I'm not going downstairs with this going on. So I decide that I'm just going to watch to see what is going on. And I'm looking at everything. And he's just back and forth the whole way down Hollywood Boulevard. I finally 
let him get far enough down that I go downstairs, I look out the, the door, I see him very far down the boulevard now, and where I live, I live on a Hollywood and Vine area, so it's relatively flat. I could see pretty far away. And not to mention, there's not really anyone on the streets, so I can see this guy, and he sticks out, right? He's no clothes on. And so I can, I can see him down there, and I'm certainly worried about the guy, but I'm also not worried enough where I wanna get involved and get myself in trouble. And there was a truck going down, a hauling truck, and he went off to the sidewalk right in front of the truck. The truck hits the brakes, hits the horn, and this guy swerves the other way back out of the way the truck goes, and then he swerves back into the road, across the street, into the W Hotel uh, foyer area, and then right next to that is the red line on Hollywood Boulevard, where he kind of just fell down the stairs into it. <laughs> Wise cocky bitch. Uh, hello to you as well. Uh, that is my that is the Twitter. So anyway, that's when I decided it, I'm not willing to hang outside here in Hollywood, and for the most part, I really would love to go jogging. I haven't been jogging in three weeks now. Um, I jog at least once a week as for my cardio with all the other exercise I've been doing. I've been relegated to exercising. <laughs> you look like Austin Powers. That wouldn't be the first time that I've heard that. Um, and that's the, it's certainly, I picked out these glasses for a reason. Um, but... What I saw yesterday and the saw last Friday was enough for me not to want to go jogging. <laughs> um, I'll stay in my house until it's all over. Anyway, so now I, I promised you guys some tips from working at home. Um, I have another appointment. Ah, yes. So I'll go ahead and, and get to that, guys. So uh, number one. You're going to have to treat the day as if you're going into work. You cannot make exceptions because you have all day sitting at home to do things. If you look at it in that manner, you're not going to get anything done. And you're going to end up putting things off. Where's the blow? I wouldn't know. It's certainly not here. Um, and so, number one, get your schedule together get up for myself. I work out in the morning. I, I usually put on Scott Adams because he can be quite whimsical and interesting takes on what's going on. That you tends to cheer me up while I'm working out. And then point, I get some coffee going. I take a shower and I get out. And then I arrange my day into three sections. And this is something that I got from Kevin Cruz's book. Um, Great leaders have no rules. This is a rad tip. Uh, and actually, Kevin's going to be on the show next week. We just talked to him yesterday. Um, he arranges his day into three parts. Creative, collaboration, and connection. And so, for myself, I tend to do the, the stuff where I really need my brain power, the brain power that I have. I use that first thing in the morning. So, creating, writing, writing. Um, Anything that I have to do that I need as much power and, and cognition as possible, those things are the things that I do first in the day. And then I arrange my coaching calls, my meetings with AJ, my business partner, and uh, anyone else as collaborations. I do that after lunch. And then lastly, the moments where I'm connecting with uh, friends, family, needing to reach out, talk to people. I do those things in the evening. This allows me to focus on the things that I, I need to be focusing on without distraction. And I also know that there is a time allotted for the other things that I need to do in their appropriate time. This allows me to give all of my attention to the tasks 
that I need to be doing. So, and then you can get slightly more granular with it by scheduling the things that you need to do in certain time slots. Reason being, if you just say, well, as long as I get this done by the end of the day, I'll be good. What tends to happen is we tend to push things off. And then, because we've pushed things off to the end of the day, of course, we don't have much cognition. We're already working on decision fatigue. So we, it's easy for us then to push things off our plate for the next day. And because of that, things are not getting done. So I arranged my day into three parts, the three C's, creative, collaboration, connection, and then I actually schedule the times when I'm going to be doing those things so that I can give my complete focus to the tasks at hand. And that certainly helps me. Um, with that, I, I, after getting a shower, I get dressed up. I put on uh, some clothes that I would be, that are casual, that are comfortable, but that, that are telling me mentally and emotionally that there is work to be done, that I'm clocking in. Now, for those of you who are living with family, I, there, I'm by myself and there's pluses and minuses to that. Trust me, I, I would love to have somebody to talk to. Perhaps that's why I'm going live with you all right here. But um, tend to block out with that creative time, the times you need most cognition. Let your family members know that this is the time during the day that you need to be locked in, that you're going into to do work, that you need to be doing deep work, deep thought. And this will allow you to focus the attention that you need to those tasks. You can tell your family, you can tell your children to that afterwards, that you're gonna be able to have the time to devote to them, to be with them. And, and you can even schedule that time. You don't have to let them know that you're doing that. That helps you know when you're going to be doing those tasks. Also, for myself, uh, I don't know about you guys, but right now I'm going live in two places. One of our other charm groups on Facebook, the challenge, if you guys would like to be a part of that, all I have to do is go to yardofcharm.com slash challenge. It's free. Um, and so, and I'm also going live in Periscope. So I have two devices up. And most of the day I usually have several devices because of all the work that I'm doing. But I try to collect ideas that I want to flesh out on my war board. I have a dry erase board where I can put ideas up so that I'm just going to see them all day. And because I see them on there all day, it's a trigger to remind me that, I, that these are ideas that I need to flesh out. No, those ideas that I'm fleshing out, they either go into content for our products, they might go to content for uh, the lives that I do, or they might go to content for the podcast that we do uh, for the Art of Charm. So, so that helps me collect ideas and then I have an opportunity to flesh them out when I have uh, more of an opportunity. And of course, I, if I see them up there and they haven't been fleshed out yet, where I haven't spent that much time, I can either do that during that creative time or I can schedule them for the next day for a certain time when I'm going to devote more cognition to that fleshing out of those ideas. So those things certainly help me. So there's about five tips for you guys to be able to manage working from home. Because let's face it, uh, for those of us who have the opportunity at home, we want to use this time wisely for our sanity, for our emotional re retainment, mental retainment, physical retainment, and, and come out of this hopefully as good as, if not better, than, than going in. I know plenty of people who have taken this opportunity to get some much needed work done, and that's great on them. Um, if you're living with other people, 
having an opportunity to dive into your work will give you a break and allow you to stretch the rubber band into an, another area, into another way, so that it doesn't get pulled apart. And, and that's one of the important things that we're going to have to take in consideration. Uh, if you're around family and you don't have much space, it can be quite taxing. So, whoa, I have an interview to do for the Grow Podcast, so I'm going to go. If you guys have any questions, comments, if you have any tips that you would like to uh, throw, you can put them in the comments. I would like to hear what those are. <clears throat> if you're interested in any of the AOC stuff, <clears throat> our private groups, our coaching, uh, any of that, you can go to our website or check out the Art of Charm Accelerator. It is for you guys in the, in the challenge group. The Accelerator address is above you. And for you guys on Twitter, if you go to our Twitter page, you'll see the Accelerator there. And I will talk to you guys uh, probably tomorrow. Oh, cheers. All right, guys. Have a good one.